What's up, insiders? Deuces Jack. I'm at vapinginsider.com. Today we're going to be going over the Squid Industries Squad. It's a nice little AIO system. Big question is, is it the best one on the market right now? Make sure you watch the whole video. Find out exactly what I think. Before we get into the video, make sure you check out our new merch site. You can get my tagline on a shirt or a hoodie. You can see I got the black, I got the samurai, I have the regular tank that takes a factory coil, and I have the RBA one as well. Let's go over them both. We'll go over the tanks separately. This is the Obsidian Black. There is your plus and minus button over there. You got this little slot that you can, you know, see your juice level. I think it's there more for airflow than it is to actually see your juice level. Here's a cool thing. Hopefully you can see this. This is picking up on camera. Let me see if I can zoom in. All right. You have a fire button there, right? And it looks like the back of a bullet with a primer. I kind of like that, man. Keeping with that whole Squid Industries, you know, theme with the guns and everything. Nice, nice job on the fire button, really, truly. I mean, I just like little details like that. You can see it's raised quite a bit. Pretty clicky, right? Click it five times. There's your screen right there. Screen's a little bit on the dim side, but hasn't been an issue in outdoor lighting conditions. There's your wattage. There's your resistance. There's your volt. There's your amps. There's your battery meter right there. All right. Pretty, pretty simple device. Here's your up wattage. It does scroll in half watt increments all the way up to 30 watts. It does not round robin. There's your minus button right there. Nice and clicky. Click it three times to lock the mod. When you do lock the mod, you can't adjust the wattage, but it will still fire. Let's take a look at the top side here, all right? You can see this has an enclosure for your tank. There are two gold-plated pins on the bottom that will make contact with your atomizer and fire your coil. One thing I wish they did do, I wish they put a cut here so this way it would allow more light in and I could actually see my juice level. Let me show you what I'm talking about with the one I'm actually using. Here's the one I'm actually using. This is the Chieftain color. And as you can see, man, you really can't get enough light in there to see your juice level. That's why I wish they would have put another cut on this side so maybe enough light would pass through that I'd be able to see my juice level. It's not a huge con, just a nitpicky con, but I wish they would have done that. I really do. I do like the graphic on this one. On the bottom right there, you can see there's your micro USB port, and there is some venting. I really like this one. This is the one I've been using. I've been using this one for about a month and a half now, and it's just, it's just held up fantastic. The finish has held up fantastic, too, and you guys know... I say it all the time, I'm very, very rough on my mods. Now, in order to install the tank, you just take it, you turn it till it kind of catches, and then you push down and it locks in. And it don't move, man. It's pretty solid, man. It don't move at all. But let's take out the tank. Let me show it to you up close so you get to see exactly what it's all about. Now, another con is going to be no removable drip tip. I don't like that. Even though this feels like a 510 and it's very comfortable, I would have preferred to have a removable drip tip. Another con that I'm not too crazy about, and again, it's not a deal breaker, but here's your fill port right here on the side, right? And, you know, while it works well and everything, you know, sooner or later that rubber piece is going to wear out. I don't know why they just didn't thread this and make it a top fill. I would have rather have seen that. Plenty of room, nice big space for you to displace air. It's very easy to fill. So once you're done filling, you just pop that thing in there and make sure, you know, the first couple of times when it's not juiced up, it's kind of hard to get in there. But after it gets juiced up and wears in a little bit, you're good to go. So now here's your adjustable airflow right here. No stoppers. It just swings all the way around. I wish they would have put stoppers on it. You know, it's dual adjustable airflow, and if you cut it down to a sliver, you can get a very legitimate mount to lung vape. Let me see if it comes up better on the stainless steel one. See the airflow right there? See that? 
like I said, there are no stoppers on it. It just swings all the way around, but I think you can see the airflow a little better on the stainless steel one. See that? So if you cut it down to like a sliver, you can get a real legitimate mouth to lung vape. Now this is the rebuildable section one, but I wanted to show you the airflow on it just so you could see it a little better than on the black. Same thing, non-removable drip tip, uh, same type of fill port right there. You can see, you know, same deal. I'm going to take the base off and show you that section in a minute. Let me show you the factory coil section first. So like every other atomizer in the world, you just screw the bottom off just like that. Out comes your coil. Okay. Now, another con on this is they don't give you a spare glass. I understand that it's protected. The problem is, you know, what if you drop it while it's out? You know, I think what they should have done is they should have either made this some type of uh, synthetic, you know, maybe Ultim or something like that, or they should have given you a spare glass. You know, that's just my feeling on it. So here's the coil that comes pre-installed. This is the squid coil. It is good for 15 to 25 watts. This is their mesh coil. Actually, a really, really nice coil that vapes very, very well. Now, I would highly recommend, once you're done filling this thing up, close the airflow on it. Give it a few dry pulls. Try to get some of that juice into that coil. And just let it sit for a good 5 to 10 minutes. Let that coil soak up the juice because it is a small coil. Now, here's the stainless steel rebuildable section. Has all of the other features that the other one had with the factory coil except the only difference is it's rebuildable and here's why i think it should have come with a separate glass right because you saw how loose that glass was right this could actually fall off on you it's not terrible it's not like blotto terrible but you know it does come off rather easy so just be careful when you're servicing it and when you're building it that you don't break it because you do not have a spare. Let me show you this deck. Deck is pretty easy, all right? Phillips head screws on top. There are your post holes right there. There is your airflow right there, and these are your wicking ports right here. Now, what you want to do when you build this is you want to use a simple round wire build, or the other thing you want to do is you can use a very small Clapton, which is what I've been using in the black one that I have, all right? It's real easy to build and wick. I'm not going to do a build tutorial for it because it just doesn't call for one. It's, you know, one terminal per post. There's two posts. It's not, it's not brain surgery. It really isn't. Just extremely easy to build. Now, just like the factory coil one, it has the same type of flat bottom, a proprietary bottom. So what you're going to notice is there's no 510, so you're probably saying to me, but deuces, when I build this thing, how do I fire the coil? Well, Squid already thought of that because what else is included in the box is your 510 adapter that will convert your tank into a 510 in order to be able to dry fire your coil. We're going to go over that in a little bit more detail in a second. In the rebuildable box, you get a cotton strip, a coil, and two spare deck screws. You will get a micro USB cable in both boxes. But the funny thing is, you only get this little spare O-ring baggie in the non-rebuildable one, in the factory coil one. You get the spare O-rings and you get the spare top fill plug part. I wish they would have included these extras in the rebuildable one as well. I don't know if it's because I got a pre-release one or if they're actually going to include that. I just got to point it out that my rebuildable did not come with a spare bag of gaskets. All right. So just be clear on that. So let's take a look at this 510 adapter right here. You can see it's got these little like, like half T's over here, right? And what that's going to do is that's going to lock onto your base and it's going to convert your atomizer to a 510 so you can dry fire the coil. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You see that little half a T right there? You kind of slip that in and slip it in and then lock it in. And now you got a 510 and you can dry fire the coil that you installed. 
pretty ingenious. They did a nice job with that. They really did. Now, I'm not sure what colors are going to come with what. This is the black rebuildable one that I've been using. This one came with the Chieftain. So let me show that to you. The rebuildable black one that I've been using came with the Chieftain. The stainless steel one came with the Samurai. And the black one came with the black Obsidian Black mod, okay? I kind of think the stainless steel looks a little out of place on the on the Samurai. I think they should have went with black. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take these two away. Okay, you can see. I'm going to take this tank out, and I'm going to swap it with this one and show you what I'm talking about. See? I think that just looks much better, in my opinion. All right? I mean, it's no big deal to have the stainless steel tank. I just think they sh probably should have went black across the whole line. I don't see a need for stainless steel in any of these. Wanted to give you a quick size comparison. This is the brand new Orion Plus, and this is the Samurai version of the Squid. This is the Squad, right? You can see the Squad is much thicker. I chose the Orion Plus because this is probably the most imitated form factor in the pod market right now. So I think a lot of people have this type of mod, so it'll give them a nice comparison. You can see they're almost the same height. The squad is definitely thicker, but I mean, they're very, very close. You know, the, the squad definitely feels chunkier in the hand. This feels a little slimmer in the hand, but relatively close as far as form factor goes and the way they feel in the hand. Give you one last look at all three of them all put together. All right, insiders. Let's get into those cons and pros. We're going to start off with cons as usual. First con is going to be, I don't like the fact that it's got a non-removable drip tip. That's a con. I wish they would have put a cutout on the other side or at least put a little light in there so I could see my juice level without having to pull the tank out. I think that would have been thoughtful. I don't know if it would have negatively affected the airflow or not. Probably not. So I would have liked to have seen more light get into that little part of the of the mod so I could actually see my juice level. Only one mm -hmm. coil in the kit, that's a definite con. No spare glass, and we're going to get into this one a little bit. I understand it's protected. The problem is, while you're servicing it, if you accidentally drop it or something, you got no spare glass. So what Squid Industries could have done is they could have went with a plastic type of Ultim glass, you know, and then I wouldn't have had a problem with them not putting in a spare. Or if you are going to use real glass like they did, you got to put a spare in the kit. The chimney on this one is a little bit on the long side. It will negatively affect the flavor a bit. I don't think it's a big deal, but I should point it out because the tank is long for such a small tank. I wish they just would have went with a screw off top fill on this. I understand they were trying to be innovative with that little rubber gasket on top. I mean, it's really, you really can't fill it while the tank is installed. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck. I think if they would have went with a screw off, you could have unscrewed it while the tank is still installed. I think that would have been a better system. And the last con is going to be that charge port on the bottom. I mean, come on, man. There was plenty of real estate on this thing. You could have put that charge port anywhere. I don't like charge ports on the bottom of the mod. I just, to be honest with you, I just don't like laying down my mod while it's charging. You know, I don't care whether it leaks or not. It doesn't matter. I just don't like laying them flat. I want my mod to stand up while I'm charging it. It's just a pet peeve of mine. I got to point it out. But that's it on the cons. I mean, real nitpicky stuff. Stuff that could have also been easily avoided, and I'm going to touch on that a little later. Let's get into the pros. First pro is going to be, man, you, you use the RBA section on this thing. The flavor is fantastic. In fact, I'm going to tell you this. If you try the RBA tank and you try the factory coil tank, you're not going to want to go back to the factory coil because the RBA is that much better. I mean, you know, it's for builders, right? So... If you don't build, then I guess you can learn, but I like the fact that this thing has an RBA section and the flavor on it is phenomenal. It's got a really nice airflow range. The range goes from a legitimate mouth to lung to a restrictive DL hit. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I got it wide open right now. Just nice. That's the way I like it. 
That's the type of restrictive DL hit I like. I got some of my apricot custard in here and it's just fantastic. I also have a small Clapton installed in the rebuildable tank and it's just fantastic. The flavor is awesome. I like the capacity on this one. The capacity's good, that's a pro. I like the fact that the tank is protected, another pro. I like the awesome colors on this thing and the finish, the finish is absolutely beautiful. It feels great in the hand, man. It's small, it's pocketable, feels comfortable when you hold it, but it also has that nice little heft to it that lets you know you got a quality piece in your hand. That's a pro. It's simple to use. It's easy to build and wick. I like the fact that separate tanks are available. I would like to see them offer a kit with both tanks in it. It's small, it's compact, it's an easy carry. And the last pro, I gotta give them props on that fire button. I love that bullet type fire button with the primer on there. It's absolutely awesome. Nice little attention to detail, Squid Industries. So let's get into this one inside is those were my pros and cons. Let's talk about this one a little bit. I really don't want you to get caught up in the cons that I had because the cons are very nitpicky. But like I said before, the cons are something that could have really easily been avoided. And I'm a little surprised at Squid Industries. The thing that I'm a bit surprised at is, you know, they beta tested this thing with other reviewers. I've heard other reviewers say that they've had this thing for months. And I don't understand how you let those little cons get through. You know what I mean? I know if I would have been picked to beta test this thing, everything that I listed would have been the first thing that I pointed out. I would, I would have told Squid, I would have said, listen, you got some cons here that are real, real easy to fix. Why don't you just fix them? Because they're gonna be automatic cons on any reviewer's channel. So, you know, I don't know if, if Squid, you know, just put these things out there to the other reviewers so they could test them for them, or they just wanted to get them to them early. I have no idea, but you know, if you had this thing for two or three months and Squid Industries came to me and said, hey, Jack, what do you think of it? I would have told them everything I just told you now. But all that aside, this is absolutely one of the best pod slash AIO kits, whatever you want to classify it at. I classify it as an AIO kit. It's one of the best on the market right now. It is absolutely phenomenal, even with the little nitpicky cons. This one is definitely Deuces Jack approved. Let's get into some of the specs on the Squid Industries Squad. It measures in at 86 by 45.5 by 20.5 millimeters. It has a 30 watt maximum power output. It is a power mode only mod. It will take two milliliters of e-juice. There are two versions. You get a rebuildable or a factory coil version. The factory coil version is compatible with Aspire BVC or Artery HP coils. Thanks for watching the video, Insiders. Definitely appreciate it. Remember, we're not a monetized channel, so we'd appreciate it if you check out our new merch store. You can get my tagline on a shirt like you see me wearing, or you can get it on a hoodie as well. We have some other great designs that you can put on a t-shirt or hoodie. Here's another one of them. Vape King shirt. And here's one of my personal favorites, Vape So Hard, the FDA Wanna Find Me. Go over to our new store and check it out. And that's it, Insiders. That's all I got for you guys today. You keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces. Deuces.